Hello and welcome to this video on the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation and pKa. And we'll cover three things in this video, the first of which will be the definition of pKa. We'll go on to derive the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation and look at the two forms of that, one for acids and one for bases. And then finally we'll go on to look at what this means, the pH, pKa arguments for drug dissociation in a general sense. And in a later video we'll look specifically at lignocaine and bupivacaine. In general terms, the pKa describes the degree of dissociation of an acid or base. So it can apply to both acids and bases, and that's an important point to note. In a more formal sense, there's two main definitions for pKa. The first of which is that the pKa is the negative logarithm to the base 10 of the dissociation constant. And the dissociation constant is large Ka, and negative log to the base 10 of that number gives us the pKa. So analogous to pH being the negative log to the base 10 of H+. Plus. The second definition is that the pKa is the pH at which 50% of the compound has dissociated. And we'll go on now to look at a more detailed explanation as to both of these definitions. So what does all this mean? Well, if we take an example of a weak acid, and remember weak acids are acids which partially dissociate versus strong acids which fully dissociate. And we will have a, a weak acid here, which starts off uh, associated with H+. Remember, acids are proton donors. So there's the potential for the weak acid to dissociate with its H+, and produce its negatively charged conjugate base. At equilibrium, there'll be a point at which there's a steady state so there's a certain amount of this species and a certain amount of these species. The weighting of it, if there's more of this or there's more of this or the same amount, will be determined by the relative stabilities of both the weak acid and the conjugate base. And exactly the same argument can be made for bases. So for again, for weak bases, we'll start off with our weak base. Bases are proton acceptors. That our weak base can accept a proton and become a conjugate acid. At steady state, so at equilibrium, we'll reach a point where there's a certain amount of these and a certain amount of these, and the relative proportions will be determined by the stabilities of the weak base and the stability of the conjugate acid. We can then go on to quantify the degree to which the equilibrium lies on one side or the other side of this, of this equation. So we'll take our acid example, and we can rewrite this and say that this can be HA, which is our weak acid, is an equilibrium with a minus, which is our conjugate base, and H plus. We can then go on to define an equilibrium constant for this reaction, and we call this big Ka, so this is Ka, and that's the equilibrium constant. And that is defined as the concentrations of the dissociated species divided by the concentration of the weak acid. So this is these square brackets are concentration of, so concentration of conjugate base times by the concentration of H plus divided by the concentration of the weak acid. By convention, you don't normally write this multiplication sign. So in textbooks, you often see it written in this form here. And then we can go on to apply our first um, definition of pKa, which that pKa was the negative log to the base 10 of Ka. So what does this mean in terms of values of pKa versus what's going on here? Well, if we take a, an example of an acid heavily dissociate. So there's lots of this, lots of this, and not very much of this, because the equilibrium lies over onto this right hand side. That will mean for our Ka value, we will have high numbers for this, high numbers for this, and low numbers for this. So our value of Ka will be high. But because the pKa term involves this minus log, we need to remind ourselves that minus log of Ka is log of 1 over K. So if we've got a 1 over Ka, and we've said that if the equilibrium lies mostly on this side, i.e. it's mostly dissociated, our number for Ka will be high, therefore 1 over Ka will be small, and our pKa value will be small. The same argument in reverse will apply if it's mostly not dissociated, and you'll have high numbers for HA, low numbers for these, and a high value then of pKa. So we can say that a low value of pKa represents more dissociation, so a stronger acid, and high values of pKa, less dissociation, a weaker acid. We can then go on to derive the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So going back to our example of a weak acid dissociating, 
we start with the definition of Ka, so that's our equilibrium constant. The first thing we do is rearrange this for H plus, so make H plus the main term and gives us this expression here. We can then take negative logs of both sides, which gives us this expression here. And then we recognize that minus log to the base 10 of H plus is pH by definition. Minus log to the base 10 of Ka is pKa by definition. And minus log to the base 10 of HA over A minus is the same as plus log to the base 10 of A minus over HA. So we can flip these terms around and put a plus sign here. If we do those things, our final equation is this, which is that pH equals pKa plus log to the base 10 of the conjugate base divided by the weak acid. And that is the henderson hasselbach equation for acids. And this leads us on to our second definition of pKa, which was that it was the pH at which 50% of the compound is dissociated. So at this point in time, when we've defined it as 50% dissociation, we'll have equal amounts of this compared to this. So our conjugate base term, A minus, will equal H plus. If we have a number here equaling this number here, we'll have log to the base 10 of 1. So if we plug this into our henderson hasselbach equation, we'll have pH equals pKa plus log to the base 10 of 1. Log to the base 10 of 1 is 0, and so this simplifies to pH equals pKa. So when these concentrations are equal, i.e. at 50% dissociation, this term cancels, and that tells us that the pKa is equal to the pH. And an important point to note is the subtle differences in expression between the henderson hasselbach equation for acids and that for bases. So if we go back to our acid uh, example, we've got our henderson hasselbach equation for acids. And it's important to note that conjugate base divided by weak acid is the final term. In this case, the conjugate base is the one which is ionized, and the weak acid is the unionized species. And so this is our henderson hasselbach equation uh, for acids. If we compare this to that for bases, where we've made exactly the same argument as we did before, the same mathematics, but we've started with our conjugate acid dissociating, applied exactly the same rules, and we've ended up with this expression here, we can see that we've got a final term of log to the base 10 of weak base divided by conjugate acid. In this case, the weak base is unionized, and the conjugate acid is the one which is ionized. And so our final term our final log term is inverted here compared to this, depending on whether we're talking about acids or bases. And that will mean that the argument with regards to pKa going up or down and that causing more or less ionization is purely dependent on whether we're talking about acid species or basic species. And that's important when we go on to talk about drugs. And we'll explore that with this example. So we've got drug A with a pKa of 4 and drug B with a pKa of 10. And we can ask ourselves, at pH 7.4, so physiological pH, which drug is more ionized? Well, the answer is, it depends. If A and B are both acids, then our henson hasselbach equation tells us that for the same value of pH, so if we're fixing pH, if we reduce the value of pKa, we must increase this term here. So for reducing values of pKa, we're getting increasing levels of ionized drug. So the smaller value of pKa in this case, drug A, is the one which is most ionized. But if drug A and B are both bases, we end up with this version of the henson hasselbach equation, where we're saying as pKa reduces, we'll have to increase the amount of unionized. And so the complete reverse argument is true. So if A and B are bases, then drug B is more ionized. We haven't done anything to change these pKa values, or the pH at which we're talking about. We just need to clearly define whether they are acids or bases because the reverse argument will be true. And another way to think about this is the direction of travel on a pH scale. So for if we've got acidic conditions here with low pH, moving up to basic conditions with high pH, if we've got acidic drugs, what we're doing is we're starting in the on this side of the pH spectrum. So we've got our drug A with pKa of 4, and our drug B with pKa of 10. So with drug A, we've reached 50% dissociation at this point. If we carry on going to physiological pH, we'll have more than 50% dissociated. So this will be more dissociated because of the lower value of pKa. If with drug B, 
we haven't even reached the 50% dissociation point, which is here with our pKa of 10, by the time we've reached physiological pH. So for acidic drugs, you can see that lower values of pKa mean that at physiological pH, you'll have higher levels of dissociation. And the exact reverse argument would be true if drugs A and B were basic. So if they're basic, they start from this side, and we've still got, so B of a pKa of 10 and drug A, which had a pKa of 4. If we're basic drugs, we're saying that drug B will reach dissociation at 50% early on before it reaches 7.4. So drug B will be more dissociated versus drug A, which again, we're coming from this because we're basic drugs, won't even have reached 50% dissociation by the time it's reached its physiological pH of 7.4. So if we're comparing to basic drugs, it'll be pKa values that are higher that are more dissociated at physiological pH. Thanks for listening. Uh, and in the next video, we'll look at a specific example comparing lignocaine with bupivacaine.